in this first tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the very, very basics of the die cutting and stamping techniques. So we're going to do this beautiful card here, which is using the lovely rose die. Now I'm going to use the papers that we've got in the kit so that you're already starting with a base colour. So I'm just going to cut a few scraps of paper that are roughly the right size there for the leaves and then also for the lovely rose there. Now, if you're using the Gemini, which I'm going to do here, they, they do work on all your different machines, but the sandwiches for your Gemini is you're going to have your base plate cut through the paper into the base. And what I will do, just for good practice, is hold that in place with a little bit of low-tack tape, okay? The same with the leaf, so you've got your paper, then we're going to have the die on there, and just hold that in place with a little bit of the low-tack tape. You then want your clear cutting mat, followed by your magnetic, and finally, your other cutting plate on top. And I'm going to send this through. Now, I'm using the junior plate in the big machine. I tend to find, when I'm working at home, I've got the big machine out. This is what I do uh, most of the time, and I, and I have the junior plate um, on there just for speed. Now, if I lift these off, oh, they've die cut beautifully and literally just dropped out. And what I will do, just keep my workspace tidy here Let's put the dies back over here and I'll show you I don't know if the camera can pick this up but you've actually got the very very faint embossing already on both the leaves and the petals now that's without us sending them through the embossing machine and you imagine cutting this lovely raggedy edge on your leaf by hand you just wouldn't do it you just smooth it off whereas having the die gives it a more lifelike feel okay so that's the cutting stage. Then when it comes to the stamping, there's a few different ways you can do it, okay? What I would recommend is the first time you use the stamps, you're going to do what's called stamping them off. They're acrylic stamps, so what we're going to do is we're going to stamp them, first of all, onto a, um, some scrap card. Just the first few times we use them, then they're going to stamp a little bit nicer. They'll work with any acrylic block. I'm going to use one of our rocker blocks here. So I'm just finding a rocker block at a good size. And again, any type of ink pad. Uh, I'm going to use our Harmony ink pads, but you just want ink on the stamp. And then I'm just going to stamp them off just to start and get a nice finish. So you can see that lovely pink. And the more times you stamp them, the more you lose the kind of coating that you've got over the top of the stamps and you get a nice crisper image. <clears throat> so I think three stamps there is probably adequate. Yep, they're stamping beautifully. Right, so if I bring my stamp back in, now if I just line up the stamp, I want to make sure that the stamp lines up exactly over these petals. So that looks like about the right way. Have I got the right petals lined up? I believe I have. So the different ways you can do it is some people like to put this, the stamp face down like this and ink it up and then take your stamped piece, your, your die cut piece and lie it over the top like this. And the beauty of doing it like this is that if you don't get it quite in the right place like I haven't over here, I can just move it over a little bit and get that on the right place. So you've got that stamped image. So it's always a little bit more forgiving. The other option, of course, would just be to mount it onto your block. Let's have a look, I've got a plain white one here that I can stamp onto. Um, load up your stamp. And then just literally line that up over the top. And aim for that stamp, okay? So just different ways to do it. Some people actually like to stamp first and then ink afterwards. Um, oh sorry, die cut after they've done the, the stamping. So it's just personal preference. That's the way that I like to do it, okay? Now I am going to then just bring this to life a little bit more. So I've just got my dauber. I'm going to pick up a little bit of ink on here and then just add a little bit of, of colour under here. And look how it looks so much more realistic when we had this little bit of ink around the outside. Isn't that lovely? And of course, the Harmony ink pads are the ones that I'd recommend for this. This is what we've developed them for. We've developed them for exactly this application technique. And if you're going for the sets of ink pads, you can use the sets to build up the colour 
um, I'm just using one flat colour here but it would work in just the same way using those sets and building up to a deeper shade and because I started with a pink paper I've already got the pink flower ready to go now I'm going to do exactly the same now I put this stamp away I'm going to do the same with the um, the leaf so again we just lift the back off and the leaf I'm going to lie down flat on here might bring it a little bit closer this time I'm going to use a green ink pad so this is the smoked emerald I'm working with here actually I've just realized I've forgotten to stamp this off on some scrap pieces of card all right so remember the first few times you use it you do want to just take that image actually that's come out really really nice and crisp so I feel comfortable moving from that straight to my die cut piece but to be honest if it doesn't go right the first time it's only a little bit of card you've wasted you can easily die cut another one okay so that is lining up there you'll find that the stamps and the dies line up beautifully so I'm just going to do one leaf at a time there's my two base leaves are done there and then the whole big piece just getting that lined up beautifully there we go so it's a little bit of an unorthodox way it's perhaps how a lot of professional stampers might not do it but if you're struggling with getting your stamps and your dies lining up perfectly that's definitely the way I recommend doing it now if I clean that pink off let's do the same with the green and the great thing about using the inks is that then it's so forgiving if you haven't got your stamp and die exactly lined up in exactly the right place okay so I can just add that little bit of colour and it comes out perfectly. So you can see there we've got a very, very realistic looking leaf there. Now I've done this in quite a dark green there and I think that looks pretty spectacular. Um, but if you look at the ones I've prepared ready to show you, I've got somewhere I've done it in the lighter colour of the green. And look at the slight difference there so it's just using different shades so every time you make these leaves they're going to look that little bit different depending on what color card you use so here i did them onto a white base card instead of the green base card and um, just kind of just shows you a few different options now the next stage if i put all these to one side um the next stage is shaping your flowers and your leaves now you can do it many different ways just pick up a lot of that ink and take it out the way so we don't get it on our project many different ways I find using um, some shaped ball tools so I've got ball tools with different sizes of balls on the end you can achieve the same using the back of a teaspoon um, and an, uh, an upturned mouse mat and um, you could use the tools out of your ultimate pro the plastic ones I find if you've got them at home the, the round head metal ball tools are the best way for shaping your flowers but you can use other utensils that give the same sort of effect if you don't have these now if I bring in one of the flat flowers so this is the flower uh, that I did onto just white card stamped and die cut and watch how we start to shape this right around the petals what I'm going to do is go around this area like this so just in a round shape using the different sizes of the ball tool and quite harsh pressure and you see we're starting to get that shaping so the same here round and round starting with the smaller one and then building up and shaping flower petals like this very rewarding it's lovely to be able to create those real lifelike pieces and the more you do it the more you'll start and get used to the the different techniques that you want to work with and there's loads and loads of different tutorials if you just go on youtube and look up um you know flower shaping you'll see loads of different tutorials for these sort of effects and how people recommend the different flowers can be formed in different ways and um, there really are hundreds and hundreds of tutorials so this just gives you a bit of a feel for how i would be doing it on this one The last petal around there and then when I turn that over you can see it's so much more shaped in there and the last thing you do is right in the middle is we want to go around and round like this okay 
So just using the different shape here and it just, can you see how it brings it all together? So that really is shaping it up. Now if I show you, for example, how we've done a card like this, all this is, is one of these petals shaped and shaped and shaped to bring it right up into place. And whereas I've shaped my petals outwards, you would just shape the outer petals inwards. So all of these different types of flowers are just shaped in different ways. It's the same if I show you the leaf. So if we just take one of the leaves, working on the big petal here, we're just going round the outside like this. And I start with the smaller ball head and then move to the larger ones like this. You're just getting that real kind of rounded effect there in the leaf. And you see how much more genuine these leaves look. They look so much nicer on your card than just flat leaves. So I would definitely recommend taking a little bit of time out to do this sort of effect on your, your flowers, certainly. You can do exactly the same on the butterfly wings with the butterfly from this set in your box. Okay, so what I've actually done is I've got already ready a couple of those leaves and um, I've got a couple of the flowers that I've done shaped like this. So we can shape them up to a really nice three-dimensional display. So they're going to be ready to mount up on my card. Now, to get the rest of the card ready, if I just bring in one of the base cards, okay, so this is just one of the card and envelopes from the set, and then I've got um, one of the mats and layers, which is just a lovely to go on the back, and then one of the pieces of paper to go on the front. And what I'm going to do is just add a couple of little sentiments on. So we've got here, the rose speaks of love silently with the language known only to the heart. And I'm just going to pop that down the bottom corner. And I'm going to use the greening for that one. Now I'm using our rocker blocks to stamp. You might not be familiar with the rocker blocks. It might be the first time you're seeing them. Um, it's just a way of applying even pressure over the surface. The other option is to use just a flat acrylic block. So I've got here, that's the rose one. And then we've also got, um, if I stamp in the top corner with the rose, if I just show you the one I've already done actually, then it saves you watching me stamp. Um, so you can see there, I've stamped the rose in the bottom corner and rose up the top and just added a little bit of ink. I've realised I've got green ink on here now um, and you need to add pink ink around the outside. But just as you've seen me stamp there, you're going to add your stamped, stamped images on the front and then the rows and that gives us a nice base to put our flower in the centerpiece. I'm just going to stick them together because we're doing flat sticking tape pen is more than adequate here to do your matting and layering in fact a tape pen would be ideal for this sort of matting and layering and it just gives a nice bit of stability to the front of the card as well. So to build that flower up, I definitely recommend using some of the 3D glue gel. Now the 3D glue gel, it's a product that we sell in the UK and it's got the same properties as silicon glue, but it doesn't have any silicon in it. So you, if you've got any um, 3D glue gel that's silicon based, it would do exactly the same job. So basically what I want to do is I want to take these flowers and I want to layer them up in the centre here. And you can build this rows up as many layers as you like so I think that's going to look quite nice with the three layers in there the more layers you build the more kind of realistic it feels like it's going to look and then what I am going to do is take that leaf and have the leaf coming out of the back there so where we've shaped that leaf up beautifully you do need some big globules of the glue gel on the back so the glue gel or the or your silicon is going to hold that in place that's what's sticking to your card. Okay, I don't know if you can quite see it there, but that's what's sticking down the side. Right, so the first base one we're going to start, I'm going to pop a few blobs in the petals, just for stability, because I don't, I would usually just put it in the centre, but I don't really want to add it in the centre, because that's where we're going to stick it all together. And that is going to add down there. The second one, I'm going to do the same again, a couple of big blobs in the petals, but that's going to layer up slightly off-centre to the other one. Then the final one, 
I'm just going to add a little flat pearl into the middle. That's just going to give me a nice centerpiece. Get that nice and central there. And for that one, it's actually better if I just put a blob of glue just in the center. And then that can hold all that down there in place. And of course, when it dries, you won't be able to see the glue gel at all. So that's the rose ready on the front. Now remember in the kit you're also getting the inserts. Now I have an insert here that I've already stamped. So these are the inserts and how they come. So they're already pre-scored and they are just the perfect size to go inside of your card. And you see it's just a tiny little bit smaller. And what I've done is I've just used the stamps to stamp a little greeting on the inside. So I've used the just for you and then the rose stamp the um, the leaves around the outside to create that lovely backing. Then a great tip for putting your inserts in, okay, you want your insert to open with the card. So what you do is have the insert and put a line of tape on the front left. And then position that insert in place exactly where you want it. Shut the card. And then that will always open because it's stuck to the front, not to the back. So it will always open then when the card opens. And then also, if you really want to finish it off, of course, you get the envelope included. And all I've done is finished off the stamping on the envelope on the two corners, just stamping using them same designs on opposite corners. So I've now got the perfect matching envelope that matches the card, that matches the insert. But it's all just working using the elements just that you have in your beautiful box.